Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Captain Shaq here, and welcome to Fallout 4. This video is going to be all about some of the things that aren't necessarily super obvious about Fallout 4 that you really want to know. These are the things that I've learned playing Fallout 4 for now 30 hours since it's come out that um, they, they didn't really tell you, and I didn't really realize it. I'd played so much of Fallout 3 in New Vegas that it just kind of came to me, and then figuring out like the base building mechanics. Now, these are the things that are really easy to miss. So let's... Let's walk out of my barracks here. This is my my nice little barracks where I keep all my people. I'm over in Sanctuary right now. Let me run out here. So first up, some basic stuff about your character, right? If you hold down tab, and this came up a lot in the streams I've been doing. If you hold down tab, you can turn on your Pit-Boy light. Basically, your Pit-Boy glows, and it gives you a, a small area around you for light. Hopefully, we get some mods where we can get like a straight-up flashlight or something, because the range on this isn't great. Better than Fallout 3, and it doesn't glow green. Uh, you can actually change the color in your option settings, what color the thing glows. But uh, kind of cool, you just gotta hold down tab for that. Cap block, if you're playing on PC, allows you to walk. Now you may be thinking, Shaq, why the hell would I wanna do that? Well, that'll actually up your stealth capabilities. If you're crouching in stealth, and you go into walk, and you're gonna creep up around that corner, say you're worried that Super Mutant's gonna see you, and you wanna use that new knife that you just picked up, and you wanna shank him in the face, well, that's what you can do. You can switch into walk mode, and you'll make less noise, and you'll be a little bit more stealthy, especially early on in the game when you really want to get those critical hits in. All right, cool. So that's another one. Uh, what else we got? Well, for weapons. Now, ammo is pretty... It's basically everywhere, especially later in the game. You're going to get so much ammo, it's not really an issue. I mean, look, I got 300 rounds for this, and it's semi-auto for for crying out loud. But early on in the game, you may have some problems with ammo. So one of the things that's kind of cool, and the stream actually let me know about this, if you pick up weapons that you see on the ground for say, I got my 12 gauge, my 12 gauge is constantly out of ammo, right? It's the boomstick. Well, if you pick up enemy 12 gauges that you find on the ground, you'll actually take the shells out of it. So you get ammo, whatever's in the clip of the magazine you can get, and then you can just dump the gun on the ground and you keep the ammo. It's cool, it's cool that they actually keep that uh, saved on the weapons. All right. Next up, we talked about the Pit-Boy light, we talked about, um, was there anything else for the actual characters that I can think of? Uh, ammo for guns, oh, the cover mechanics. So this hey, one, Gopher actually, let me know about this. You realize how when you did for us. Yeah, I, I do, I do, it's cool. So, if you, if you take cover behind something, you notice you put your weapon away, right? Well, especially in the harder difficulties, I've been playing on survival mode, uh, survivor mode, uh, if you're gonna need to be able to pop out and fire, and there's no leaning mechanic where you can hit like Q and E and lean, but you can, Right-click when sitting at an edge of a building, you'll pop out. Hurts. My feet hurt. You see that? You'll actually Everything pop out hurts. and you'll be able to fire. So I can pop out, let off that? a round, and pop right back. Preston, just just relax, okay? It's all good. Whoa. And you can pop right out. So that's kind of cool. Definitely useful if you're playing on the harder difficulties. Uh, next up, let's talk a little bit about the um, the base building. Some of the things that Hope weren't immediately <laughs> immediately obvious. Uh, first thing, vendors. Vendors will make you money. If you have the local leader perk, you can build the, the early stage of vendors. This is actually, I think, the tier two vendors that I've got here. Um, you can get it, I think it's like the tier four ones, which are the, the big fancy ones. But they generate an income, right? The more you have, the more money you'll generate. But I didn't know how to collect that income. I thought maybe it was on the people, but it's not. It's actually, all your resources end up in your workshop's uh, inventory. So you just go over here and hit transfer R, whatever your console you're playing on or what kind of controller you're using. And if you go through all your junk, you can find, I don't know if I have any, but you will find bottle caps in here somewhere. If you just go through, I guess we just go through everything. Let's see, bottle caps, do I have any? I might've already looted them recently. Bottle caps, 19, because they have not made me crap. Get to work, people. I need some. I need some caps. We need ammo for our for our settlement. I, I really dig the armor. <laughs> I gotta paint this still. It's so bad. All right. The next one is a supply lines. Now, me, I think it was Tryon on the stream. We're talking about this, and he wasn't sure how to see. You know, where are all your your territories that you control, right? Well, if I hit C on this map, it says it on the bottom. You can see all the territories that you have and you can see where your supply lines are running. And I'll show you how to set up a supply line and actually what that does, because there's a little bit of misunderstanding that people seem to have about supply lines. But all the lines you see are the places connected to Sanctuary. And I've been using Sanctuary as kind of a hub for all my resources because I've been keeping them all here. All right, so that's how you see your supply lines. You can hit C, hide, show. Let's get out of here. If you go into build mode, this is how you start up a supply line. 
There we go. Build mode. And you go up to one of your people, NPCs. You can actually... This is the way you see if somebody has a job. If you highlight them, it'll highlight what they're doing. But say I want to take her off a of guard duty, which is what she's doing right now. And I want to tell her to do a supply line. I look at her and I can hit Q. I can't do that right now. She's busy. Oh, is there anybody else around here I can give to... Hey! You've got a job, and you won't let me tell you either. And notice when I hi highlight him, all the farms light up for the ones that he's actually taken care of. Let's find somebody who's being, being a bum. Hey, you. All right, I can give you supply line mission. So hello, settler. Supply line, and I can tell him where to go. And what's going to happen is he's going to get a Brahmin, and he's going to start walking between what this base and whichever one I send him to. So I say I send him to... Um, the Abernathy farm. He'll walk back and forth. We'll actually see him over there. And this is where another thing comes up. If you want to transfer people from one point to another, right? I want to send him to the farm and I want him to stay at the farm. I make him a supply line, send him over there, and then I go over there and I hang out for a bit. And when he shows up with the supplies finally, however long that may take, you may have to wait a little bit, you can actually assign him a different job while he's there, and you've now just transferred him there, which is kind of cool. Uh, but that's how you set up your supply line. Now, supply lines... Um, the, what I knew they did for the longest time was they allowed me to use the resources from the base that you're connected to. So if this base is connected to the Abernathy farm through this guy, I will be able to build using all the resources that I've been storing inside my, uh, my resource bay here, my workshop, which we can go and see. Like, I've got tons of crap in here for, for crafting and whatnot, which I do need to clean out, but you'll be able to build. So if you need, like, there's no lumber there and you need a ton of lumber, set up a supply line, you can start building with that lumber and start putting up walls and stuff. Now, what it also does is, if I go under V, it will share water and food. And that surprised me because I didn't think that was true, but it is. It'll actually use up some of your water and your food. It'll transport it there. So if you've got a place that you want to turn into, say, a, a vendor place... Then, and all it has is vendors, it's like a shopping mall. Then you set it up to some place that maybe is a farm as well, and the farm will subsidize the food that's required, which is kind of cool. Okay. Uh, next up, and th what I wanted to talk about was the guards, right? So I've got my guard here, and she's walking around. Life still ain't perfect, but we're surviving. Now, I wasn't sure about what her path was. Like, I, I signed her to to go over to, see that? I signed her to go and guard the shack. But notice how all the shacks are lighting up. What's really neat is if you want to kind of control where your people patrol, put down lots of guard posts, and they'll actually patrol between the guard posts. And that's how you get them to patrol farther out around your compound. Or maybe if you, you're only building in a small section, like I'm only building around this building here and the barracks, then I want to keep all my defenses nice and tight around that structure. And that's exactly what I've done. Is there... Is that a Brahmin in my house? Dude, don't, 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 don't shit in the bedroom. Oh, man. Right then. Ah, the Brahmin. The last time I saw the Brahmin near the house, it was on the roof. Things are crazy. All right, so one thing talking about building stuff, and this one isn't told you. You won't find this anywhere uh, in the game that I could find, but say I want to build a bed and I can't get it in the right spot. I just, they will not go in that one spot or a wall or whatever. This will help out a lot. You can use middle mouse wheel to make it go farther out and a little bit closer back in, but you can also hold down E. When you hold down E and just move the mouse around, you'll move it around like this on a single plane. If you use the mouse wheel while holding down E, you'll also be able to change the elevation of the object. This will make it a lot easier to place down decorations and objects, whatever you're trying to do to really set the place up. This is gonna give you that fine tuned control where this, where you're moving your whole view and your perspective and you're moving the, the bed at the same time is a real pain in the ass. So this is the way to do it versus this. You can also move it up and down as long as there's something that it can sit on because it won't just float. Okay, cool. Uh, if you build something and you're like, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to leave it. Obviously, you can store it by hitting tab while looking at it, and then you can hit E to select the option. Say yes, hit tab E. You can remove a bunch of stuff. When I was building this structure, I was able to uh, tear it down like three times completely, store everything I built it out of. Because when you destroy stuff, and I had to test this to figure this out, it will take half the resources when you destroy something and rebuild it versus just storing it and replacing it. You'll have a hundred percent versus fifty percent. I burned through a lot of wood that way before I figured it out. All right, guys. Well, I think that was it. Um, oh, well, mob removal. I guess I could talk about that real fast. I mean, that one is probably pretty obvious. You probably figured it out, but why not? If you keep 
a hold of your mods. We'll go over to the workshop. That's an armor workshop. Let's use the weapon one. If you keep a hold of your old mods, especially, like, say I'm taking Betty out, right? And, oops. And it's, I want to get, uh, I have, I, I find a weapon just like Betty, right? The assault rifle. And I find another assault rifle, and it's got a way better stock. Like, I, I want the short stock, but Betty's got the long one. No, I, Betty is perfect. I wouldn't change her for the world. But, say I wanted a short stock. Well, what I can do is, I can take my old standard stock. Where, let's see, where's full stock? I can take my, um, I can take off my full stock. <laughs> Excuse me. If I have my old stocks hey, like this one, and say I want the short that. stock, and I've got like a marksman stock, sure you can swap out together, huh? the ones that you currently have on you, don't sell that. them, and you won't have to build it to replace it. And then you can take the, you can put the crappy stock on the thing you like, get the good one off of the item that you found, take the good one and put it on the one that you want to keep, like Betty here. Let's see, I already have a short stock, so I didn't have to build that. Rest didn't like that, and Codsworth loved the fact that I put a short stock on my rifle. Great, guys. That's wonderful. And I can just swap it right back. So if I wanted to put this full stock on a different rifle, say when it had a, a bonus to it or whatever, I can throw it on short stock. And then I can switch out to a different rifle, the one that I want to put it on, and go from there. So keep your keep your mods is, is basically what I'm saying. Keep your mods so you have at least one of every type so you can hot swap them out as you need them. Uh, and you can you can add stuff to those super legendary weapons that you find, like and I want to talk about legendary weapons real quick too because this is really neat. Legendary weapons. Where where is she? Where's the magic shotgun of of justice? The never-ending double-barreled shotgun. It has unlimited ammo capacity. This is something that I picked up. What does that mean? It means I never have to reload. There is no reload animation. It just fires away. This is why I call it the magic shotgun, and I'll be able to mod the crap out of this, and this will be boomstick when I'm done. My new constant uh, shotgun. But what's cool about this is, this is where difficulty comes in. Now, I'm a huge fan of hardcore. Hardcore mode for New Vegas, especially when you're playing it modded. You can get it just the way you want to play your game, the way you enjoy it. Um, but in this title, in Fallout 4, if you go to gameplay, and you go to difficulty, Difficulty in the past Fallout games has been nothing but turning enemies into bullet sponges. They do more damage to you, they have more health. It was literally a multiplier. It would multiply how much health they have up until it was so ridiculous you'd just be burning all your ammo to kill a single ghoul. I, I hated how they did it. In this one, though, instead of doing something like that, they actually up the chance as you turn up the difficulty of legendary enemies, meaning you'll have a better chance of finding awesome guns if you turn up the difficulty like the magic shotgun here that never has to be <laughs> reloaded. It's absolutely ridiculous. And it also burns through my 12 gauge really fast. And it does is the same amount of damage as my normal shotgun. So it's it's fantastic. So if you want to find more cool shit like that, like the junkie switchblade, this is why I have so many of these. The ice maker, uh, which the ice maker actually does like freezing damage when I hit people. The junkie switchblade does more damage if I'm affected by withdrawal. So the more withdrawal effects I have, the more damage this thing does. It's ridiculous. I really do enjoy these, the lucky, you know, refills action points, the lucky hero, if I get a critical hit with it. Also does a stupid amount of damage. I mean, this stuff is really cool, and you'll be able to find it if you turn your difficulty up, if that's your thing. You'll still be able to find some of these guns. There are still legendary enemies out there. You'll just get more of them if you turn your difficulty up. But they are really bullet spongy, which kind of sucks. I hate that as a game mechanic. I'd rather see more enemies than bullet spongy ones but that's personally that's just me i'm curious to know what you guys think about that though is it okay if they're legendary enemies if you're sitting there firing and firing and all day long or would you rather see them be more difficult like they do more damage to you or they are more accurate maybe they've got more goons around them protecting them like that's what makes them hard not the fact that they can take a round straight to the face from a 44 and shrug it off like it was nothing i don't know it's a little immersion breaking for me but all right guys i hope this helped some of you guys out there i hope you learned something new and if you didn't i hope you just enjoyed the commentary i'm gonna be doing some more fallout streams i want to finish up this character so i can start up a legitimate um edited rp series like tale of two wastelands which i think is going to be a lot of fun i'm actually really looking forward to it so if you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel for more gaming goodness, and as always, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time.